Hello everyone and welcome to another app that's under the monthly spotlight. Now today it's the turn of the Tasmota plugin, an excellent plugin by Simon Fair. Now for this plugin, it's slightly different to others we see. We do need some extra hardware. We need something called a Tasmota device, something like one of these. But more about that in a moment. Anyway, let's go over to the desk and check out the plugin. Okay, so before we actually look at any of the Tasmota devices, or how to set up the plugin, I'd like to show you it in action on my server. Okay, so here we are on my media server, which is my low power build. I'm gonna go across to the dashboard here, and we can see here, we've got Tasmota Power Monitor 1 and Tasmota Power Monitor 2 currently. Now, this one here, we can see here the name is BaseStar, which is the name of the server. So this monitor here is monitoring this current server that we're on. And currently it's drawing 23 watts here. And we can see how much energy it's used today so far, how much it used yesterday, and the cost of each of the days. The cost of running it yesterday and the cost of running it today. And here is the total cost of running this server since I set it up. Now above here, you'll see this other one here, Tasmota Power Monitor 1. And the name of this is Rack because this is my server rack with three different servers in. Currently, only one of them's turned on, which is base star here. But if you notice here, the power draw of this one is fluctuating between kind of 44 to about 48 watts. And this one here is 24 watts. And that's because this Tasmota plug is monitoring the power of my whole UPS. So it's plugged into the wall and then the UPS is plugged into that and then all of the servers come off that UPS with different Tasmota power plugs for each one. So what this allows is to see the overhead of how much energy the UPS actually uses. So the UPS is using 20 watts all the time just to do its thing. And again, we can see here the cost of actually running it. In total, since I've had this going, it's cost me £354 to run the rack. Now, I really can't remember when I actually put this Tasmota plug in. It may be 18 months, one year, two years. I'm really not sure. But we'll come back to that in a moment. And we can see today it's cost 21 pence to run so far. And yesterday, 35p to run. So here, if I minus the 21p of running base star yesterday, because that was the only server that was turned on, well, it cost 14 pence to run the UPS yesterday. Okay, so that's the Tasmota plugin, how it looks on the dashboard, displaying some info there. Now let's have a look at some Tasmota devices. Well, I think in fact, it's important before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what actually Tasmota is. So Tasmota's got an interesting history and it was first seen around, I think, 2016. And it was designed as an open source replacement for proprietary firmware that we saw on various smart home devices, such as smart plugs and switches, that allowed us much more flexibility and not being locked into actually the vendor's ecosystem, giving us the flexibility to have full control locally and not be dependent on any cloud services. Now, because it's open source over the years, it's constantly being developed by both the developers and the community. So that's really cool. And the way we can actually get Tasmota, we can get it in two different ways. We can either flash Tasmota onto various compatible devices, such as this one I've got in my hand here. Now, unfortunately, it's out of the scope of this video for me to show you how to flash the Tasmota firmware onto a compatible device, but there's loads and loads of tutorials online that will show you exactly how to do that. But if you don't really want to do that, you want to take an easier route, well, you can actually buy devices that come with Tasmota as the default firmware, such as this one I've got here. So there's plenty of flexibility with how you can actually run Tasmota. And another great thing about Tasmota is it's also fully compatible with things like Home Assistant. So we can have it in our Unraid server on the dashboard with the Tasmota plugin, but also have that Tasmota plugin monitored by Home Assistant. So this gives us some really good things that we can do because we can actually monitor the Unraid server from Home Assistant, its power usage and that kind of thing. So because the Tasmota plugin 
currently allows us to monitor up to three different TASMOTA devices on our Unraid server, we can show three different things on the dashboard. Now, obviously, they don't have to be servers. They could be really anything. It could be a TASMOTA plug plugged into your washing machine. It could be one plugged into your TV, your monitor, your Xbox, really whatever you wanted to have monitored on the dashboard. But really, it makes more sense for it to be something server related. That's why I've got my rack and my server. And I think for the third device I'm going to put on the server is going to be my monitor. So I can see whenever I like how much actual power my monitor is drawing as well and how much it's cost to actually run my monitor over the year as well as my computers. Right, so I'm going to show you some Tasmota devices that I've got and how I use them. And you can buy Tasmota devices in really any country in the world. Obviously, we've all got different types of plug ends. This is a UK one here. And the US and EU ones are going to be different. So when you order something online, make sure it's the actual right one for your region. Now check out the links in the description of this video where you'll see some links to vendors in different regions. And if you also know somewhere to buy a Tasmota devices in your region, please put it in the comments of this video and let everyone know where you buy yours from. So if you live in Europe, you can get a pre-flash plug by a company called Local Bytes. These are the ones I use myself. These obviously plug directly into the wall. And this is the one that I use to which I plug my UPS directly into to monitor the whole power of what all my servers in the rack use. Now, Local Bytes unfortunately only make two different types, the UK head and the European head. But for you guys over in the state, so I found a vendor called Tindy who make Tasmota 16 amp power monitoring plugs. So if you pick one of these up, it will work perfectly with the Tasmota plugin. Now, as well as the Tasmota energy monitoring devices that just plug straight into the wall, you can also get ones that you wire yourself in the center of a cable. And I've got one here somewhere. And if we have a look at this one here. And the good thing about this is you can actually wire it into a kettle lead. Now, I know the picture of the one I've got here has got a plug end on it. But what I did is I just cut the UPS cable and wired a power monitoring plug in the center of it. So then coming off the UPS, I could actually have independent energy readings for each server. Now, what you can see in the picture here that I'm using is a Sonoff Power R2. You have to flash these yourself with Tasmota. And I don't actually think they're sold anymore. Now, you might find some old stock. And as you can see here, I saw some on eBay. So I bought a whole bunch of them because I really like them. But there are plenty of others you can pick up that will allow you to wire them in line. I'll leave some links in the description to some resources where you can actually search for Tasmota devices. But for now, let's move on and actually install a Tasmota device onto the server. OK, so here I am back on Base Star server. And you can see here, I've actually removed the Tasmota plugin. So we can start here from scratch. So obviously, the first thing to do is go across to the Apps tab. And you'll see the Tasmota Power Monitor in the Spotlighted Apps. If you don't see it here because you're watching sometime in the future and it's come off the screen, then just do a search for Tasmota and install the Tasmota Power Monitor. And so with that done, if we go across to settings here, then under user utilities at the bottom, we can see Tasmota Power Monitor. Now, as you can see here, we've got device IP1, device IP2, and device IP3. So how do we get a device IP? Well, I've just plugged in a fresh Tasmota plug, and I'm going to go here onto my Wi-Fi, and I'm going to look here at other networks. And here, we can see, here's my fresh Tasmota device. So I'm going to join onto the Wi-Fi network for this Tasmota device. And now we can see here, pop-up windows come, where I can now join the Tasmota device onto my chosen Wi-Fi network. And I'm going to choose Decepticons here, as that's the one I use for all of my IoT devices, and then just pop in the Wi-Fi password and click on to save. OK, so here we can see the IP that this device has been given. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to open a new tab here. And here we can see that I'm straight through to the Tasmota dashboard. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to configuration here 
then other, and I'm going to name this Samsung Monitor. Okay, so that's the name of the device. Now in the configuration, I could here enable a web admin password, but I don't want to do that. But if you wanted to, this is where you'd put it. So I'm going to close this window now. Okay, and so here are the settings for the Tasmota power monitor. Now at the top here, we can choose if we use a password. Now, as you saw earlier, I don't use one. So I'm going to leave this on no. So the new device was on IP address 192.168.11.163. Now it's a good idea on your router to set these so they're static IPs so they don't change. Now next we need to name it. So I'm going to name this monitor as this device is my Samsung monitor. Now if you remember at the beginning of the video when I showed you my Tasmota devices, the rack and base star, I couldn't remember when I'd installed that smart plug for the rack, whether it was one year ago or two. So in a recent update to the Tasmota power plugin, we can actually name devices and where we only used to be able to have one device, we can now have three. So what I do when I name the device is I put in the date. So today is the 29th of March. So I'm going to put 2903. And for you guys in the States, we do our dates the other way around to you and 25 for the year. So now I'm going to know when I come and look at this in a few months and I see the total cost, I'm going to know the date that that started. But to know the total cost, we need to put in the price per kilowatt hour. So for me in England, it's 0.25 or 25 pence per kilowatt hour. And I'm going to change the unit cost here from USD to GBP for British pounds. And I'm going to click on to apply. And so with that done, I'm going to click on to done. And now let's go across to the dashboard. And so here we can see my monitor and we can see it's using 73 watts because it's quite a large monitor. So next I'm going to add, I think, the rack in next. So I'm going to go back to settings and Tasmo to power monitor. And I'm going to put the next IP in, which is 192.168.11.245. And I'm going to call it rack and I'm going to put in the same date. But the problem is, is when we go and have a look on the dashboard now, well, it's still got the total power consumption that I've used since I've had this plugged in. So I need to reset that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across here and I'm just going to reset everything. And to do that, I'm going to go onto configuration and just click reset configuration. Now the device is going to restart, but we won't actually see anything at all. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to click on the Wi-Fi button again and wait until I see a Tasmota device. And there it is there. So I'm going to click onto it and wait for the window to pop back up. OK, so here it is. I'm going to choose Decepticons again and pop in the Wi-Fi password and click on to save. OK, so it's been given the same IP address as before. So I'm going to click onto that and now go to configuration, other, and I'm going to name it rack. And again here. OK, so that's all done. If we go back here, we can see it's kept the name the same, but the usage has reset. So lastly, I'm going to put back on base star server. And this IP is 192.168.11.247, if I remember. And let's call it base star. And for the date, I know what that one was. It was the 15th of March, 25. Now, if Simon, the author of this plugin is watching, it'd be really cool if you could put a little date field in so we can set it in a separate field other than the device name. That would be really cool. And if you guys think that would be a good idea, then please say so in the comments below and the author might read it and add that to the plugin. OK, so now I've got my three Tasmota devices, my monitor, the rack and the server that I'm on. And I can see the power they're all using through this awesome little plugin. Very, very cool, I think, and really, really useful. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this monthly spotlight for this month. Please join me next month where we'll be looking at the next awesome monthly spotlight app. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
I just want to say thank you everyone for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.